guys, it's Lauren. And I'm Megan. And this is episode one of the Scribe Squad pod, where we are going to be diving into chapter one of Fourth Wing. Okie dokie. So we've actually read this. We read this once through for our book club. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to go chapter by chapter and dig in because we felt like there was so much information yeah. and so many Easter eggs, things that we missed that we can't point out to you everything. Mm -hmm. But I think just even preparing you for the information that you're taking in because it comes so it, our, yeah. as I was reading it I was like it starts at the very beginning yeah, and it gives like no background information on anything you yes. have no idea who these people are yes. where they're at why they're doing this and even in the first chapter it doesn't even explain everything so I feel like it's nice to have a resource. And if you are like us and you're a big book nerd and you like to write notes or you're annotating your book, we've actually created a companion mm -hmm. material that you can download um, off Etsy. We're on everything as Scribe Squad Pod. We're going to try to post for you guys and get you, you know, all, all of the new information as it come, comes out, as we're posting new episodes. And of course, as new books come out. What, what do you know in them? I think that somebody said it's being released potentially December 2024. Nice. So we've got a little while. So disclaimer, mm -hmm. we have read both Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, and we are going to try our best this episode to not do any spoilers, but anything in the deep dive is totally spoiler going to happen. Yes, it's just going to happen. Yeah. So if you've not read Fourth Wing, let's go on this adventure. Hooray. I, I got a way different feeling about this the second time I read it. It's interesting that you say that too, because so my sister-in-law just started reading this yes. and she called me and she's like, I don't understand anything that's going on. Like, who are these people? What is a quadrant? Yes. Like, what is this like tail section? She said, I have no idea. Like, I don't even understand how to process this. So it's funny coming into it. Like the first, like as someone who's read it, mm -hmm. you realize she's literally in the middle of like, one of the biggest like what could almost be a climax in other books yes like yeah. what could be the defining moment and it is a like yeah. big defining moment mm -hmm. but it's crazy that they throw you in there i feel like there almost could be a prequel about what happened before and how they got here Ooh, rebecca yaris there's an idea for you we would we would read it for you yeah so the book starts out and our main character violet she is getting ready to go through um it's conscription day cons constri Say it again. Conscription day. Conscription day. And um, she starts immediately. You're, she is. I do think that I, as I was reading this, I realized Rebecca Yaris paints a really good picture of like what the scene actually yes. looks like. Like she's climbing the stairs, mm -hmm. um, coming into the. Um, the parapet and the turret. And yes. She is that. very good. Yeah. About that. So a couple of things that just in the first couple of pages, you get a couple of descriptions of people that you don't really know how they're related to each other, but you're getting some really big descriptions of people. Actually, can I make us pause and go back? Yeah. Okay. You have a really good note on here. Something that we've talked about since, but something that I want to call attention to, which is where it talks about this has been transcribed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was literally just reading this. Yes. We, how, do you care to read it all? Yeah, I can read it. Do you want me to say something about it first? No, okay. just read it. Okay, it says, The following text has been faithfully transcribed from the Nabarian into the modern language by Jacenia Neilwart, curator of the Scribes Quadrant at Bezgayath War College. All events are true, and names have been preserved to honor the courage of those fallen. May their souls be commended to Malik. So when you first read that, like, what did you take away from it? So when I first read it, it scared me. Okay. Okay, also... I don't even know what any of those words are going yes, into this book. Yes. I'm like, okay, somebody's writing a story for us. Like, yes. what's going on? I guess when going back and reading it, like my second read, yeah. it almost scared me because I was like, oh no, does that mean that like everybody dies and she's so writing the history? I read that the first time I read it, I was like, this is like Harry Potter. It's got it all end in a big war. Yeah. Like, and while I feel like that series led us very slowly into what yeah. we realized had to be a war. I kind of like the fact that it was like, Hey, psh, there was something people yeah. have fallen. There's obviously some kind of battle. Yeah. We don't know at this point who or what it's through, mm -hmm. but we know that there's a battle and that there have fallen. Yes. The second thing I picked up on, even on my first read was Malik is an important character. Yeah, I agree. And I agree at the first time I read it, I'm like, Oh, Malik is their God. Mm -hmm. But even within chapter one, a very small phrase, she says, oh, my gods. Yes, she does say that. You realize it's 
Malik isn't the only God. Yeah. And I think that I didn't realize they, they kind of made that clear in chapter one of this book. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yes. Means, so yeah. I, I picked up on that this first time, but not originally when I read it. So I think it's very interesting. It sets the tone for what the series is going to yeah. be. And I also find it very interesting and we'll talk about it more throughout the thing, but Malik is like the one that they mentioned the most. Yes. Malik. And then there's one other, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, the one of like luck or whatever. Yes. She talks about that a lot yes. because she needs a lot of luck. And yes. Like so but Malik is a huge, huge, if you're following along with us and like your companion book, Malik is someone I know because yes. he does get, or they, they get mentioned a lot as this God, they pray to Malik or thank Malik. And I love the way that, it starts creating this world. Yes. Like there is a very, this is not in our world. Correct. Yeah. It's very much a different world type yes. of place. Yeah. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yes. All right. So now again, she's climbing up these stairs. She's, she, it is con conscription day yes. and we find out about quadrants. So if you're a math person like me, when I read quadrants, I automatically four. knew there were four. Yeah. Yeah. There are four. We know, um, what she's preparing for. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know how quickly it, it does it. it. Okay. So, okay. So it first starts out by explaining, just like talking about Violet in general. And it like says that she's like climbing these stairs to go to General Sorengel's office. We don't know who General Sorengel is. All we know is Violet's first name. So we have no recollection or like, we don't know how they're related. Yes. Um. So she's like saying like, it's really hard to ca carry this like pack up to this office. And she it talks about like again it says like we have no context of who they are but the way that violet talks about general soaring gill it's like very cold and like stranger like she's not super close with whoever this person is yes and so that's our first introduction of general soaring gill so my favorite thing which i'm gonna go ahead and say so we find out very quickly yep. general soaring soaring gill is her mother yes my favorite thing is she wrote this and if you are I think just versed in like literature or, you know, movies, regular thing, you assume it's going to be a, da a man. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I love 100%. that first shock. Yes. The first shock. Yes. I didn't even think about that. So let me point something out that I've, I realized reading this again, the three main characters that speak in this chapter, all women, all women. And they all have like, like her sister Mira will, she's introduced in this chapter, Lieutenant. Yes. She's automatically has, title. A, title, I, has and, a title. And I just like as a strong woman yeah. who like I, obviously I, I advocate for, you know, being a strong woman, being a powerful woman. I love it because mm -hmm. there's not enough. There's not. I, I know that this will get made into a movie. I know. And I can't wait for it to be oh, the show. It can't be. I can't wait to see strong women play this. Same, same, same. So we walk in. We have uh, General Soren Gale is speaking to Mira, mm -hmm. who we find out is. Her sister. Her sister. Her sister that she hasn't seen for three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Since my understanding is since she went through this herself. Is that kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause okay. they basically don't come home after they graduate. Okay. That's yeah. what I I kind of had picked. I I so I'm reading chapter by chapter as well. So mm -hmm. with you yeah. guys, I've read through the whole series, but I'm only on chapter one again. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I you do not have a sister. I do not have a sister. I have a sister. And the fact of like thinking about going three years without seeing, I mean, you have a brother. Yeah, but I don't see my brother very often. <laughs> but I, I'm close. And so for me, this like really hit home because I like the thought yeah. of like saying goodbye to your sibling. And not just saying goodbye, but having no contact. Yes. Essentially no contact at all at for all. three years. And letters may be here and there, but face to face, not at all for three years. So you have Mira and General Soren Gale. They're going back and forth. They're arguing about Violet. Mm -hmm. And you already see, I love the way this is written because it's already framing your view on Violet and her relationship with her family yeah. and who she is, how she sees herself. Um, and I think it's really, it, it, again, it gets introduced, introduced really quickly. Her father and her brother have died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, males have died off which I think yes. is very interesting but so now you have you understand the dynamics of this family yeah and also in regard to the dynamics it introduces her dad who has passed and he was a scribe yes so he was not like of power of any sort like he followed his wife yeah where she was stationed throughout the you know country and he was just the like the stay-at-home parent essentially yes. to all three kids yeah so we walk in and they're fighting and Mira is fighting for General Sor Soringale to not send her youngest daughter through the white, the writer parapet. 
Is that what it's? It's the rider quadrant, but, but yeah, you have to cross you the pair. Um, and but Amira does not think that Violet can do it. Yeah, it specifically describes um, Violet as like very fragile. That's a huge word throughout the entire book, the entire series so far is Violet is a very fragile, she's not necessarily like weak, but just fragile. Like she breaks her bones really easily. And like, she's gone through a little bit of training, but she was like not set up for this quadrant whatsoever. She's just a very fragile, person yeah but she's very smart yes it talks about how smart she is and hi if you're interested in like our deep dive we're going to be going into the quadrants mm -hmm. and how each of those kind of line up with each other because i think you get a lot out of this chapter after reading it again about each quadrant mm -hmm. so yes you do you find out she's very smart um the one thing as i read this the first time i automatically had a poor image of her mom yeah, i was like same. she has a strained relationship mm -hmm. but then reading it the second time so i came from a military college oh uh, yeah and so i saw a lot of my peers you know in the these instances and unfortunately I lost some of my peers yeah. and I realized if you are a general that's the only way you can be is kind of distance yeah and, and so yeah. like at the first read of this I was like oh what a horrible relationship she must have and then the second time I was like well that's just a general yeah and and also too it's funny that you mentioned that because after reading both books, you see what all General Thoringell has done and yes. has had to live through and the decisions she's had to make. Yes. And those are hard decisions. So I, I can't imagine trying to be close yes. to somebody. Yes. And yeah. again, so I think it boils down to she's a general. Yeah. And I, sure. I think that like that went in or my bias was she's the mom. But yeah. then the reality is she is a general. And so it also introduces this idea that um, it first mentions dragons. Yes. So they first mentioned dragons when they're actually describing Mira. So it says that she's got powerful muscles, toned from years of sparring and hundreds of hours spent on the back of her dragon. So again, we don't know why there are dragons. We don't know what's going on with the dragons, but we know that there are dragons. And not only is Mira like this very tough girl, but she's also a lieutenant. Mm. And she has a, again, she has a title and she's very good at what she does. Yes. That's all we kind of know about Mira so far. And I think that like, Obviously, based on the book, you can see that uh, she dragons are going to be a ma main part right. of this. And I think it's such a great it's so interesting that Mira is the first one that introduces it. And then Mira really is the one that has starts teaching us about dragons with how she starts preparing Violet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're going back and forth and Violet has accepted her fate. Yeah. 100%. She, even though everyone else she's going to go against has been training for years and she says she has only been training for six months. Mm -hmm. She was prepared to go into the scribe squadron. And so she has just accepted her fate. She's going to go through, she's going to give it her all. And that is one thing I feel like I really respect. Yeah. Um, about Violet, about Violet, yeah. about she's handling the situation. I would personally be freaking out. Like, mm, gotta go. <laughs> and she is very, and I think that is throughout her character development. It's like she is very strong on her word. Like if she makes up her mind about something, there is nothing that's going to stop her. Yes, and that is her throughout the entirety of the series. Yes, yeah, yeah. you're, yeah. So she's decided it's happening, and she doesn't even try to fight it. Mira is trying to fight it, but yeah. she's accepted it. Yeah, she is ready. Yeah, um, and. The one thing that I picked up that I want to talk about more in the in the deep dive is they say a cup, they phrase it very interesting. You will not be just like in the scribe. Like they they kind of start creating this hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And it gets reaffirmed later within the chapter of the writers are elite. Oh yes. So oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the way she even speaks about her her past husband isn't yes. necessarily in the light of he was a it was he he was a scribe. Yeah. And um you have a great quote written here which is you are the daughter of a writer yeah. and so and you find out even within this chapter uh, it's a legacy thing mm -hmm. writers create writers yeah. um strong bloodlines and i think that that is just interesting how this hierarchy is starting to be created within the quadrants and also too and we might get into this a little bit but even when they talk about conscription day, they talk about how there's like thousands it's all 20 year olds there's mm -hmm. thousands of 20 year olds and the ways that you're able to get into the quadrants is you are either conscripted, which is basically like you're drafted from all over the continent, um, or you volunteer um, to go into it, um, or like someone will take a test yes. to like see where they would be put. Um, but 
the writer's quadrant, you can only volunteer. Yes. It's only volunteers because I mean, you die. Yeah. Like you die. You're going to, there's a, there's a high, yes. there's a high percentage of them yes. that die. And I mean, you see it. I know you guys have read chapter one. You see it. Yeah. At the end of chapter one, we face our first death. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting that they expose you so quickly I agree. that there's going to be a lot of death in and this I book. And I think it's a good build up too, because one thing that Violet says again throughout the entire series so far is, I will not die today. Yes. I will not die today. She just like constantly reminds her it's like manifestation. Yes. You know, speaking of yes. I believe in and it. So you're constantly getting this, like even from the beginning. Oh my gosh, I touched something. Hmm. I think you guys remember we said this was our first time podcasting. So I apologize for that brief interruption. Not only is our first time podcasting, there are like tornadoes outside today. So we had a small interruption, but we're going to pick up where we left off. I, we were talking about um, going through the parapet, right? And oh, she, I think we were specifically talking about how she has this mantra of, I'm not going to die yes, today. I'm not going to die today. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about just like death in general. Yes. So yeah. We face death in the first chapter, as you see, um, to skip ahead, you see that Dylan slips yep. and falls. And I think it's such like at the introduction of Dylan, I was like, oh, this is going to be a big character. And then I know. Cause you get bye. Rhee and then yes, you get Dylan, Dylan. and Re obviously becomes, which I guess, yes, you don't know it anyway. Yes, um, Dylan's like talking about, like, oh, we it's bad luck to get engaged before you go, yes. and like you can't get married, so I'm like wearing this ring. Yes, and I was like, oh, we're gonna get and a then love he's story gone. as soon as we get on. The one thing I will say about the conversation with Soren Gale and um, Violet and Mira is. Soren Gale believes she can finish. Oh, yeah, so her mom specifically says, yes. that. yes, she's like, I have a note about it because, um. Uh, Violet deals with more pain before mm -hmm. lunch than you do in an entire week. If any of my children is capable of surviving the writer's quadrant, it's her. Yes. And she says that specifically to Mira, who's talking about how, like, Violet she would can't never hold make up, it. Yeah, she can't hold up yeah. her bag. Yes. So, think that's interesting. I agree. Because I think that when you realize she's lost her son... She's not going to risk a child she doesn't think that's going to get through. Yes. And it also, again, shows us there's something weird about Violet. And there's also some some weird connection that I still don't even know after reading the yeah. second book. Like, there is something about Violet to General Soren Gill Yes. That is important. And also, it's one thing to note is that when Violet is describing her siblings, she says that General Soren Gill respects Mira. Yes. But loved Mira. Brennan. Yes. That's the only child she actually loved. Until yes. His death was very hard and for her. And you can tell that it was hard for the entire family. Yes. Like the way that they talk, even yes. as you continue on in the chapter, he is a character in this book. Mm -hmm. He is fully in this book, mm -hmm. even with them talking about him in the past tense. Yes. Like he, I pointed that out to them at the, like when I was reading it and we were texting, I'm like, hey, he's a main character. Yeah. Like this is something I'm picking up. So I think that, that that'll come. And I think the one other thing that we need to mention about this meeting before we kind of get to the parapet part because I think that's a, such a big part is yeah. it mentions as you start realizing that the people have powers so mm -hmm. for them they don't say their powers they call them signets yes. and um, General Soringale's signet is she wields storms mm -hmm. so when she's talking about it they say like the temperature shifted in the room because of that storm wielding mm -hmm. it does not mention Mira's power is that right no it does not mention her powers but I will say the one thing that it does mention is how they get powers so yes. it says that there's a specific line that says um, that she, her signet as a storm wielding that she channels through her jazz, her dragon aim seer. Um, so, you know, that not only do they have powers, but that's, they get them by their dragon. Yes. Like they are connected to their dragon. Some, and she even, somehow. she even like heeds her this warning of like, don't try to wield power without a dragon. Yes. Yes. So that sets up an idea that I've never realized. Can you have power without a dragon? Like, because she says, don't do it without being bonded. You can. And I was like, interesting. Yeah. So there oh, is yeah. a, you can have it without this, yeah. this idea. And so, and then another thing I want to know, a couple of things. Um, so it talks about to um, Violet's hair. I think that's worth mentioning. Yes. Um, so it talks about Violet's hair is like brown and then toward the middle of her hair, it's like silver gray. It yes. loses all of its color. And it talks about how when... General Sorengel was pregnant with Violet. Um, she got sick with some kind a of mystery illness. Yeah, it's like a fever of yes. some sort. And then she was born that way. And her mom 
told her she needs to cut her hair because everybody's going to know who she is when yes. she goes into the writer's quadrant. And Violet specifically says, it doesn't matter how I cut my hair. It's always going to have this look to it. Yes. So that gets us into, okay, so Mira accepts the fate. Okay, my sister's going in. She does what any big sister would do, any sibling. Mm -hmm. She starts to prepare her. And she says that Brennan did this for her too. Yes. So again, Brennan gets mentioned. He's a main character in this chapter. Um, so she immediately goes, the first thing she does is the boots, yes. I think. She's like, hey, take those off. Yeah. You need rider boots. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that, for the first time, when she starts talking about the boots and like changing her clothing and all the stuff i'm like oh like this isn't just like a hop skip and a jump yeah. like they're going to be fighting yes she also says they're going to try to kill her yes they're going to be after you so it sets the tone of like the soaring girls are not highly favored just because they're the general's family exactly. they um and actually it starts talking about um, Mira starts giving her advice and we'll get a little bit into on and not only is she not favored she is going to be like like hated hated yeah but i'm gonna hate her just because she's general Swarndale's daughter yes exactly so she has like i feel like when you're a coach's kid you have one of two realities you're completely favored without talent mm -hmm. or your dad your parent is so hard on you because they know you can exactly and i think that like that's kind of this dynamic of like they they, they expect more out of her yeah the other thing about this is she, when she's putting on the clothing mm -hmm. she says that there are um sheaths for her daggers yes mm -hmm. and in the in, in the leathers yes in her. the leathers and that she only has four original daggers yes. um and violet says but you'll earn more mm -hmm. so like you see that that daggers are a sense of currency in a way and we'll find out later how you earn them mm -hmm. um but i thought that was interesting that we got that mention and then there's something special about her armor there is so mira gives her like the armor and also it's another thing to mention too, cause they're going through her rucksack and she's like taking out all this stuff and you know, Violet's fighting her over it. She's like, I was born to be a scribe. And so I've got all these books and like, I can carry it. And yes. cause the biggest thing is you, you can take whatever you want into the writer's quadrant as long as you can carry it. Yes. So she's taking out all this stuff. And so one of the things that Mira specifically gives her is, um, like an armor, a body armor, essentially. And like Violet's looking at it and she was like, this is like dragon scale. Yes. Like, what the heck? I can't, you don't get leathers until you're actually a cadet. Yes. Which is not until you pass the parapet. Yes. And Mira specifically says, you are, if you can carry it in, you can have, you it. can have it. The other thing that I think is important to note with that is she asked her, have you read, um, the book what's the book that they go they go by um oh the codex the codex she mm -hmm. said multiple times but it's very small because writers don't follow rules yes so i think that's interesting that even if there was a rule they'd probably be an exception for mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. writers challenge you yes. you figure out very quickly writers are very challenging to what i'd say the status quo is yes and um, it also talks about that too when they're talking about like the infantry and like what they're wearing yes and they were basically like well the writers wear whatever they want yes. because they don't follow any rules that yeah so yeah. you get set up so um the the other thing they mention is of course the why the one book she's so upset about is from her father yes. does not sound like she has a lot left from her father and it sounds like she w was given this the interesting thing and i'm gonna i'm gonna directly you know we're not gonna elaborate honestly we don't have anything to elaborate with yeah it says that it is folklore about dragons being evil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i think that that's interesting because there is it also men mentions like some characters um she calls them weavers and she corrects her sister she's like they're not weavers they're w what? Wyvern. Wyvern. Yeah, Wyvern. Wyvern. Um, and the other one that they mentioned are Gryphons. Yes. Oh, and also another thing she says is um, she corrects her on the venom too. Venom. That's the what it was. Vermin. She called them vermin. And, she, and Violet's like, no, it's venom. It's venom. And also another thing that I'd like to like point out too is um, one thing about the author, Rebecca Yaros, is she does not use words without them actually meaning something. intention she's like yes. taylor swift in that way yes taylor swift is her favorite artist so she's <laughs> a big easter egg girly one of the things that they talk about is one of these books or one of the books that mirrors like trying to take out of her rucksack right? yeah because she doesn't need it and she's like no that's the one thing of my dad she was like this is a silly um allegory mm. so she calls it an allegory and not 
folklore. And if you know the difference of those Interesting. terms, like, you know, that's huge. That yes. verbiage is very huge. I think that too, that's so big. So there's going to be stuff um, that we don't even pick up on. Yes. We we have gotten together with quite a few of our friends and talked about different words she uses. And we're going to have guests on um, to kind of give their opinions because our theories and stuff we're going to create in these deep dives aren't just, I mean, they're just theories and a lot of things, but we want to hear y'all's too. So if you have like your words you picked out yeah. that like we didn't pick up on, give them out to us because we are interested in all of the theories. Yes, we love theories. So, okay. We'll go through. The other thing is she mentions two people when talking to Violet. She mentions one for her to go to and one for her to steer clear of. Mm -hmm. The one she wants to um, her to go to is uh, Dane Ados. Mm -hmm. um, and she says he will put you like in, where you need to be. Find him. He's a second year. Second year. And she also makes it clear that not to not to date anyone outside of first year because they'll look at you kind of less, which is yeah. interesting too. That like just an interesting concept of like, hey, don't sleep your way to the top. Yeah, exactly. And it also when they first mentioned Dane, we don't know really who he is or yes. like what their relationship is other than the fact that they basically grew up together and Violet like has a crush on him. Yeah. Like she always wanted to like date him and yes. stuff. And they grew up together like um, running around with each other, but they, it doesn't specifically mention like how they know each other, why they grew up together or anything like that. But yes. it just mentions that they grew up together and that she kind of has a crush on him. Yes. Which is interesting because anything we know about the military general, like, you know, that that's not typically a steady like life. Right. So they have somehow managed to keep this relationship right. going. Exactly. Um, and then the second name she mentions is Zayden. Yeah. And she says to steer clear. Mm -hmm. He is a third year steer clear of him. He is coming after you. He's going to murder you. There's no question in Mira's tone. There's the, the, the message yes. is very clear. He's coming after to kill you. Yes. And part of that, you find out that there was a rebellion mm -hmm. and that his father was the, the, the rebellion leader. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, that is very, you know, important to just set up the dynamics of this is not only like, could there be an external war? There's some internal wars that they have been fighting. And it's also fresh. Yes. Like, the, they're fresh off the war, like, three years off the war. I think, so. too, the fact that you start hearing about, um, they talk talk about torturing the kids mm -hmm. um, in this book. And I think the dynamic of, like, punishing children for their parents' action has, like, I don't know if you ever watched The 100. Mm -hmm. Like, it's on Netflix. Same concept. Mm -hmm. And the way you view those leaders change mm. because for those of us who have children yeah. like the idea of like your children's carrying your sins yeah very interesting but also just a interesting theme um okay so she is warned mira hugs her which is a big deal um they don't have it doesn't sound like a very emotional relationship yeah but i think mira thinks this could be the last time yeah. she's ever going to see violet yeah and i think violet also like hints at the fact that she was like my sister actually hugged me yes like, she's never hugged me before like this is a very odd thing yeah so we know that like this is, and they also talk about like i know we're about to get into talking about the parapet but they talk about like the percentage of yes. cadet or you know candidates that die every single year yes just trying to get in here and so mira already thinks less of violet she yes. already doesn't think she's going to make it and so violet's like whoa this is weird like, yes my whole family's acting weird yes so then we're at the parapet <sighs> so um, one of the things Mira hated her was not to make friends, to only make alliances. Yes. And you see right away she is not going to adhere to that right. rule. It's not in her nature. Yes. And one of the things that I you notice or I picked up on was there's two parts of her kind nature that show in this chapter. Yes. The first of which is she's she meets Dylan. She meets Bree. She is immediately like, Bree, take off that boot. Yep. You're going to slip. She gives up 50% of her stronghold on that rock to save someone else. Yes. But, and again, I think that's such a good character, beginning of character building. Right? Yes, I agree. And you see that she's interested in learning about Dylan. And one of the things, like, that if you have ever been in any kind of military or anything, like, sometimes knowing a lot about someone makes them harder when you lose them. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think it's interesting that she chooses to turn around and really get to know the person, the people in the front people. of her. Yeah, exactly. And also, so they're also, like, going up the they call it a turret and they like go up these stairs to get to the, cause the parapet's like very high up. Yes. It's like very narrow, just rock. And, 
um, people are like asking questions about it. Cause some of these yes. people have never been here before, yes. but Violet, it says like grew up here and she's like spouting off facts about it. And they're all just looking at her like, what the heck basically? Like, how do you know all this information? So I think that that's interesting too, because she, I mean, Violet's smart. Yes. She's very smart. Yes. And that is one thing that they said, like her intelligence will help her get through. And I think yes. you start seeing it right away. Like she remember, like she took her scribe training very seriously. She memorized so much about, um, about these, these things. Yes. And I think that and that is such an integral part of yes. her character. Yes, I agree. So, yeah. So she's spouting out like two candidates died last year, just climbing. Like yes. they didn't even yeah. make it to cross. They just died climbing. They climbed up the stairs to get there and yes. literally felt through. And she said two, not including the one that, that person that fell fell on yes killed somebody so technically three people died just walking up there one of them was a complete accident so you know that the storm is building mm -hmm. mira mentions it you know they've just climbed up the top and now we're at the parapet mm -hmm. we know that there's a giggling guy behind her and immediate so when i i I don't know. I got bad vibes immediately from the guy giggling. I think there's something like nefarious yeah. when you hear someone laughing at. Imagine yeah. standing in line for like the deadliest moment. Fine. <laughs> Here we are. Like pointing and laughing. I just, I got high school girl yes. vibes. Yeah. And I don't know. It like made me chill, gave me anxiety. It gave me a little bit of anxiety. Which that doesn't go any further in this chapter, yeah. but it just immediately bad vibes from the guy giggling. Yes. So we may re. We meet Dylan. Mm -hmm. They share their story. And unfortunately, Dylan, you know, he falls. Yes. And that's kind of the end of his story. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as we, we know right now um, in, in this. And so I think that's a great part for that. But then let's talk about our seeing Zayden. Oh, no. We got to talk about that. So we don't know Zayden. All we, they do talk a little bit about because another thing to mention too because i think this plays a big part is the relics like the rebellion relics yeah so they go into detail about how she was like oh my gosh like that's one of them yes like, it's almost like they are um branded they're branded yes, yes. but it's almost like a little bit not like racist but a little bit just like like prejudice yes. against these people who have the relic because yes. that means that they their family was part of the rebellion yes and it says she violet specifically mentioned she was like i the only other relic that i've seen is the one that you get from your dragon mm. the one that your dragon places on you when you bond a dragon she mentions that in the first chapter and she was like they're all on their arms and so she was like they you can specifically point out these people so then we meet zayden so i'm a big romance novel girl you know when I read her describing his eyes, <laughs> I immediately was like, this is going somewhere mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you don't look at someone's eyes and take note of them if there isn't more. And so for me in my head, I was immediately like, I think there, there's got to be something yeah. more to this. Yeah. Um, there's not in this. You see their first react interaction is anything but pleasant. Yes. He is taking her in from top to bottom. Yes. That is one thing as I'm reading, he is observing her. Um, and two things become clear. Zayden blames her for his parents or Soren Gales yeah, the for, Soren Gales for the death. Mm -hmm. And she blames Zayden for killing for her brother. Brennan. Yes. And I think that's a dynamic to set up that those were, I mean, that's going into their relationship. Yeah. But it did. I was like, I when I was like, obviously, I know he's not going to murder her right here. There would be yeah. no more. Well, and book. that's also against the codex. Yes, too. yes, mm -hmm. you have to cross in. Yeah. So, I you just know automatically he's going to be um, he's going to be a big character. Yeah. He's described as a guy who has big muscles. I mean, she is like going into detail about him. He's just she, a hunk of man candy. Yeah, <laughs> he's six four. He's got dark eyes. Muscles. Yes. <laughs> so when I was reading this. I thought in my head, I pictured Zayden being a person of color. Yeah. And I think Rebecca Yaros has confirmed that he yes. is a person of color because it says he's got very dark skin. Yes. Like dark hair. Which I love to see that representation. Yes. So I like yes. in my mind, that was who who it was. It's so so it's interesting to see fan art and like you see Zayden's white for me. I'm always like, oh, no. that's not what no, I pictured. Yeah, but um, I from this first description, Same. I was like, he's a person of color. Yes. I agree. Um, and, you know. 
she describes him as like being near perfect astonishingly perfect yes. actually yes. the most exquisite man she has ever seen she's like really loving them what she's looking at yeah she's <laughs> like i'm about to die but let me take in this one last Ooh. slice of cake you know what i mean um yeah and it, it's a very serious moment yeah. so um this chapter leaves off she unfortunately just watched she met zayden she keeps going and unfortunately you watch Dylan die, which I think if that's a hard read for you, prepare because the the rest of this book is yeah. full of tragedy. Don't fall in love with any characters. Yeah. It's like Game of Thrones esque. Like yes. you can't fall in love with anybody. Even you if they're a main know. character, you don't know what's happening. Exactly. So um exactly. I think that that's the end of chapter one for us. So we're gonna try to have episodes for chapter two and three up shortly. And I hope you guys are enjoying uh, us going through. We're gonna go to our deep dive if you want a little bit more, like we always do. Always. We'll see you at the next, uh, or we'll hear you. Well, you'll hear us, whatever it is. Toodles. See us. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>